says, hey, I'm going to give you a little of what I took, Chris. And he stands a good left hand. Haugen in the blue, Chris Calvin in the gray. I'll go to Sonny scoring, although most people think it's going to be academic in this one. Yes, I believe we will also, Al, but right now I have Calvin pointing to 19. Oh, they're heating up upstairs. I'm sure Haugen with a good left hook. Well, we told you Haugen takes a round or two to get going, and he did take some punishment from Calvin, but he's getting off offensively right now. And perhaps you'll see him boxing more now also. This is a jab of Calvin getting in. As I mentioned, an, uh, often an underused weapon. Calvin missing with the left hook. He had that surgery on his left elbow after the fight with Sean Thomas. And uh, says that it feels much better now. There he throws a good left hook and lands it right behind it. It's arthroscopic surgery that uh, took away the pain he's had for a while. He's starting to land some pretty good short chopping rights to the head of Hogan. Whistles past the head of Greg Haugen. Watch your head. You know, these fighters are both big punchers, and big punchers like some room, but they don't like to fight that much on the inside. Well, they're not giving away too, too much room right now. They're content to stay inside. Right hand by Calvin. As this fight progresses, he's landed about three or four pretty good rights. Haugen's still standing. As I said, he said earlier, Al, he had a pretty good chin. Right now, it's right, true. Right. For the moment, anyway. Taking some good shots from Calvin. Left hook by Calvin. Hogan holding on the inside. Both fighters trying to get their jabs going, and they exchange jabs. Hogan, 25 years old, and Calvin is 26. Hogan trying to make his way right now at 12 0 1. Still wants to move into the upper echelon of the division. And uh, Chris Calvin, very, very close. And a couple of wins by him could very easily get him a title shot. Many people believe against, perhaps, against Chris Paul, the IBF title holder. Calvin works on the inside. Right now, though, Hogan is the opponent in front of him. And in this third round, Calvin's starting to put some punches together. Good left hook to the body at the end of the third round. In the great chunks, he starts out with a good combination to the body against Greg Haugen in the blue. Haugen from Auburn, Washington. Held the distinction of being the Alaskan lightweight champion. Won that title up there. Calvin, of course, from Nashville, Tennessee. He is a fireman there. He is indeed a fireman. That's no gimmick. In Louisiana this week, a fireman in Lake Charles said to me, tell Chris that all the firemen down here are rooting for him. <laughs> the firemen stick together. Good uppercut by Calvin. Wild left hook. Sonny, when he leads with that left, Calvin, in his previous fights he's done that, that left hook, he always looks wild. It never seems to work for him. What do you think would be an alternative for him? Well, a good right hand. What, what, what's going to have to happen? And I think Hogan is looking for that. Hogan is looking to, to let him leave like that and then maybe drop a right hand in there. Because he's open for it. Faint left, throw right. Now, they told Calvin in his corner, when Hogan throws the jab, they said it's a lazy jab. Connor with your overhand right. Of course, that's uh, one of the big punches for Calvin. Maybe he's bigger. been a fairly close affair. And Calvin might be ahead, but Chris ha or, uh, Haugen, Greg Haugen has stayed in there with him, that's for sure. He's been awed by Calvin's power or anything. Well, he hasn't given any ground at all, Al. He's continuing to press in himself. Halfway through the fourth round, it's scheduled for 10. Our main event here on Top Rank Boxing. Al Burton along with Sonny Means. Again, the wild left hook from Calvin. That was something he did in a fight against Efren Nieve, a fight in which he got a draw. We had it here on ESPN. Many people felt he lost that fight. I thought he lost by a point or two, and he got a draw out of it, but he kept leading with that wild left hook, not putting his punches together. We have got a very good crowd here at the showboat. Not quite capacity, but a really good crowd, and they are in 
into this fight. It slowed a little bit here in the fourth round. The first three were pretty quick pace. Haugen working on the inside. There's yeah, a good stiff jab right there that Calvin walked into. Boy, the pace has slowed discernibly here in the fourth round. So both guys are throwing a lot of heavy leather out there. Good land by Haugen and the right by Greg Haugen. Calvin responds on the inside with an uppercut. So round four, a little quiet. See if it's the low before the storm. We'll return for more of this lightweight bout from Las Vegas. We have been fascinated from the beginning. As a machine, the human body remains a supreme invention. To unlock its potential, we offer solo play. Round five action. Approaching the halfway point, lightweight action, and Chris Calvin comes out very strong here in the fifth with a three-punch combination. He did that in the fourth, and then things slowed a bit. Sonny means scoring this fight as we go along, and let's see what you've got. Slow, son. Yeah. It's a good fight. It is indeed, and you've got Calvin ahead by one point. They both work a little bit on the inside, and David Curl is right there to break them. Left hook again by Calvin. They want Calvin Sonny to jab and then throw the right hand. He's not really listening right now. No, and he's not doing it. If he's listening, but he's not executing. You got to execute. Good right, followed by a left hook. He's listening, but he's not paying attention. I guess is the way we can phrase it. Right hand on the inside by Hawk. Both guys keyed off there now with a flurry of punches to the body and back up to the head. There's the jab by Calvin. They really want him to do it. Calvin leaning in and Calvin kind of complaining to Davey Pearl. There's the overhand right. You know, when Calvin faints and then goes with the overhand right, he's effective as he did there. Instead of just winging that punch. And when the man is leaving, leaning in, don't complain to the ref throwing up a right uppercut. He was open for it. This one's getting a little sloppy here in the fifth. Hogan gets him in a headlock. That's on Tuesday night on ESPN. Or Monday night, I guess, is wrestling night. <laughs> Tuesday night is wrestling night. Oh, those ESPN programs, they don't have the condition right. <laughs> a little over a minute left to go. In the fifth round. Good right hand by Calvin. And he did it off the jab, Al. Yeah. That's what James Mullins, his trainer, has been trying to get him to do. So much of what Chris Calvin has problems with in a boxing ring, and they aren't that enormous, come, I think, from his lack of sparring. Just doesn't get much sparring down there. And uh, I just don't know how you can be an effective contender if you don't get much sparring. You need that kind of workout, your timing, your reflex. Yeah, and his timing is what hurts him often. Yes. And you see evidence of that here tonight. It hasn't been a bad performance, but it's been a little bit off. Haugen, though, I don't think Sonny has done that much offensively in the last few rounds. No, he hasn't. He, what he's trying to do, he's trying to uh, on, to allow on, Calvin to, uh, to make a mistake and miss, and he wants to counter, but at that time, they get too close and they tie up, so he can't get his shot. But, ooh. Good right hand by Chris Calvin. Finding the range with that right hand a little bit more. And we will head into the sixth round. Don't go away. Sanders. Six, Chris Calvin in the gray trunks. Greg Haugen in blue. Haugen from Auburn, Washington. And uh, Chris Calvin from Nashville, Tennessee. And boy, those places are almost as far apart as you can get in both uh, geography and culture, I think. Haugen nailing Calvin with a good right hand. Gets some support from the Western crowd. Moves in. And he got Calvin moving away. Calvin began to get down his bicycle and get back from that. This is not known as a guy who likes to fight going backwards. This fight has settled in a little bit. And the pattern seems to be one fighter starting out strongly and then the other coming back. And by and large, though, I think it has been Calvin working a little bit harder. Not by much good right by Alton. He 
neither fighter has been knocked out as a pro. Good left hook to the head of Haugen from Calvin. In that string for Haugen. Oh, left hand by Greg Haugen on the inside. Both fighters have gotten the attention of the other with some shots. Remember in the first round where Calvin nailed Haugen with a right hand right off the bat. Stunned him momentarily, but give Greg a lot of credit. He kept his poise, got himself back into this. And now he's starting to put his punches together using the jab as a good weapon. A little more movement from Haugen now. Moving at angles, and there he lands an overhead right against Calvin. And it looks as though Calvin felt that punch, Al. He looks a little stunned from that he punch. He may be weary. And that right hand hurt Chris Calvin. I believe it's in the left hand. Greg Haugen now has Calvin in some trouble. He's got him down and nearly out of the ring. A left hook sent Calvin down. Calvin's eyes look clearing. David Cole keeps counting. He just beats the count. Calvin says yes, he's okay, but we'll see. He Greg says Haugen. yes, but his legs say no, Al. He's on wobbly legs. Haugen may be ready to pull a giant upset. Chris Calvin in all kinds of trouble. Around You see, Calvin was in trouble. We're back live. Was Greg Haugen happy? I guess so. Why not? Chuck Cole will tell us about it. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Davey Pearl stops the bout at 2 minutes, 37 seconds of the sixth round. The winner by a TKO and still undefeated, Greg Haugen. Greg Haugen said he would be able to beat Chris Calvin. I don't know how many people believed him, but he believed, and that's the important thing. We're going to find out from him how he did it when we come back. I ask you, first of all, in that first round, how much did that right hand that he threw affect you? You look like you reeled back a little bit. Oh, he caught me and stung me. Guy hits real hard, yeah. you know. He's got 16 knockouts and 17 fights. He stung me. I told myself to move to his right a little more. Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, hard to hit with a jab because he was lunging forward. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I was a little cautious at the first few rounds because of his power, and he does hit hard. Yeah, I guess he does. But you know, I thought, you know, I could take it. I thought, I thought it could take his best shot. I've been hit by bigger and better guys, but Chris, I'll give him all the credit in the world. Was the moving to the right, was that the keen strategy to you? Yes, sir. It was staying away from his right hand. You know, I knew if I stayed away from his right hand, kept my left or right hand up, I could catch his left hook. And uh, I don't know, can I say hi to my daughters? You sure my can. family, all, uh, right. all my sparring partners. Great. Let's, like to thank let's, them. Okay, let's take a look at the where you knocked him down. And uh, as you uh, look at it, you can comment for us. Well, he kept coming in lunging, and I hit him with a hard left hand. And uh, I felt that he was hurt because he, when I got to the corner, he held on to me. He tried to trap me in the corner. And uh, I just wanted to stay on him. When I hurt someone, I like to stay on him. And, uh, you know, he takes a heck of a shot. I guess. I, Do you think, had you boxed, like you said earlier, that you were going to be a boxer somewhat, had you boxed, you could have gotten it maybe a little earlier? Well, it took me a few rounds to start boxing. Stan and Wes told me to start boxing. I was behind. I didn't want to lose. I have too much to gain to lose right now. And this is a big fight. I uh, hope to move on to bigger and better things, and I think I will. 